Studying, uh, I've been uh, learning math and, and, and languages, but I wasn't really into art-related uh, studies. So I went to study architecture, <coughs> and I studied art. I mean, I spent so many hours studying, working, I did late hours, two, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, just drawing stuff. And at the end of the year, I still failed, and that was why it was shocking. I worked so hard, so extremely hard, I still actually I wonder, I asked myself, what happened? Why did I fail? And I start to think about it, and I felt like, yeah, this is actually my first time that I came in contact with an art-related study. I mainly failed because I had no faith. Nobody learned me how to look at stuff, how to look at architecture and, and, and say that's a nice building and that's another building. Nobody ever learned me that. This was my first year that 
somebody make me aware of <coughs> you can look at stuff, you can like stuff, and you can dislike stuff. But you have to be able to tell why something is good and why something is bad. First time, that's the Um this could have been like at the end of my studies, but I had great parents and they allowed me to try one more time. And somebody told me, like, yeah, why don't you go study animation? I know there's a school in Brussels that you can study animation. You can study animation. Now, right now, this might be yeah, ordinary for you guys, but at that time, um, animation or studying animation wasn't that normal. It was really, the first time I came into that class, we were like 10 years old. And so I didn't realize you could actually study this kind of stuff. And I thought like, yeah, let's go back to what I originally wanted to do. I wanted to do computer graphics. And maybe animation is the way to go for me. And so again, I dived in, basically deleted all my computer want to uh, fail again, and I didn't want to, to have a feeling that I again did something that could have um, helped us again. And by the end of the year, I had the best course of uh, yeah, the whole class, because of course we were like 10 people. But every year, I and the next years, I graduated each time with distinction. So I finally found something which I could really dive into, which I could really be passionate about. In my second year, I, um, I won an award on a, a film festival for an animation, which was actually a film festival where you have people studying for four years, sending in their animation, and I won with a second year movie. So that told me something like that. Yeah, actually, this, this is the thing I want to do. And in retrospect, studying, studying um, computer science and then architecture basically prepared me for that. Those failings prepared me for that. I think if I would have started out studying animation straight away, I would probably have failed my first year. Because I don't think I would have taken that animation split, that animation class so seriously. If I didn't have failed like two times in a row. And this is something really important I think for some of you guys, is I think most of you guys start out the first time on high uh, on university or high school, how do you call it? Um, and I think if, if you never learn to fail like that, it's maybe harder for you to find the right motivation. Continue. So I'm hoping that this 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 talk will help you guys to realize this. Now on to finding work. Uh, so I had a really good parkour on uh, the animation points, and I need to find a job. Now on the animation from back then, this is 2001. Uh, there weren't that many animation studios in Belgium. It was uh, great, and we had Imagination in Motion. I don't know if people know Imagination in Motion, but they uh, one guy, great. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, back then they were at the top of the class. And the funny thing was that people I uh, met on the internet six years before that uh, were still we were still friends, and two of those guys. We're working with as a program. And they basically got me into this. So again, if I didn't have studied uh, computer science, I wouldn't have met those guys, I probably wouldn't have been able to get into uh, imagination in motion. Um, after imagination in motion, when I started at imagination in motion, I thought like, yeah, it's the coolest company ever. The problem was they were in bad papers. Back then I didn't know that. But six months later, uh, imagination in motion and bankrupt. But luckily most of us could all migrate to uh, a games company in a uh, called Joe Logic. 
And after that, I stayed there for two years, doing all the maximum. And after that, I switched to first and Um. There was a point in my life where I was actually thinking, like, is this really what I want to do? Do I want to keep working on the same market? And I had to figure this out for myself. What exactly did I want to do? So I took a six months of free time, and I could do that because back then I was still living with my friends. Um, and it allowed me to think, like, yeah, what, what, what do I want to focus on? And I wanted to focus on concept art, <coughs> doing concept art. And after those six months, after rigorous training and, and, and trying to, to, to work on my, my portfolio, I, uh, well, did my application line in studios, but at that moment there was no application to do but I thought, like, why do I want? I'm just going to try to see what happens. And luckily, at that time, they um, were going to start with Divinity 2, and they were looking for consequences, but they did not put that on the website. So I basically wanted the first guys to get on that. And after a few months at Lion Studios, I got a break to uh, promote it to a new artist, and after that, a few months later, I got it promoted to art director. So I did the art direction on Unity 2. After that, I did the <coughs> art direction on Ground Commander, and I also did the art direction on Original Sin. So that latest game you probably all know now. It's one of the more successful Kickstarter games uh, out there. So, yeah, so most of these concept arts you see here are, uh, well, it's basically a mix between a Dragon Model stuff and the really 2 stuff. And uh, <coughs> maybe I should have numbered it so you can see some progression here, but I think it's obvious which is uh, original sin, which is the really 2, and which is Dragon Model. And when I first started out, when I, when I sent in my portfolio to I uh, the studios. I was really great for <coughs> Not only I would thought about next, how to create, how to set up the great portfolio, and how more difficult it is right now to find a job in the industry. Because back then it was like, yeah, you had a portfolio, you, you went somewhere, and if you were lucky, you could get in. There weren't, weren't that many people trying to find a job in the industry. Right now, and just looking at this class, uh, a lot of people. Are studying this, uh, are studying digital, digital arts. And this is not the only school, you have a lot of these schools. So you guys are not the only ones, and there's a lot of um, yeah, people out, out there, and there are not that many jobs out there. So the only way to get a job right now is to excel, to be really better than everyone else. And you need to show that with your portfolio. So if you build your portfolio, you should only show your best work. Um, you can show some work in progresses, but I would not put that in your portfolio. I would have, set, I would have would do that in a different one. But your main portfolio should be your best work. And also should be focused on what you want to do. If you want to do character art, then only show character art. If you want to do map paintings, only show map paintings. But don't start mixing. Because it gives you a mixed message. And uh, I can relate because in the beginning of this year, when we started on um, Divinity Original Sin 2, uh, Sven, our boss, um, asked me to uh, look into freelance. So I posted uh, a job application on Polyform, and after a week or so, I got 150 applicants. And every day, more came in. So I had to go over all those portfolios and all those resumes, and uh, I think I know now what I would like to see in portfolio that I show them. And one of those things is uh, make your portfolio accessible. So when I open it, I want to see the inside. I don't want to wait 20 seconds for a flash animation to, to, to show the portfolio. It's had that once, always just do it. So I click on the site. And there was this beautiful animation, everything opened up, but I had to really to see what was actually in there, and I didn't want to do that. 
But still, I, I, I tried. So I clicked again on the track. And again, the animation 20 seconds started, and I just went back to that. I did not want to see it anymore. So if you set up your portfolio, make sure that with one click, people can see um, what's in there. Personal work in the portfolio. I think you should definitely show your personal work, but not in your main portfolio. Um, maybe create a blog where you can show step by steps, um, progress. Even a deviant uh, might be a good idea. I also have a deviant where I usually post a lot of uh, scripts and, and, and crazy ideas and try out. Um, but personal work is something which is also quite important. Just trying to get up to date with everything is, is, is one of the things you guys will need to do when you uh, start working. So when you go into a production, a games production, usually that kind of a production takes about three to four years. That means that four years, you're stuck to a certain kind of technology, a certain kind of workflow. And well, I've worked now on, on four different games, and I can assure you that every time you finish the game, the technology is completely different. So when we started out with the things you do, there was no zebra. Just imagine that, no zebra. And normal maps were just becoming the norm. Nobody knew how to work with normal maps. So we had to go to GDC just to know how to work with normal maps, how to page. Nobody actually knew it. And, and it was really funny to even see now to compare this situation back then with what we have now. It's a lot easier now to, be, uh, to create high resolution art, um, high poly art, um, and make it than it was back then. Back then you had to do everything through box model. So the creatures were basically box model and then bake. And I think a lot of baking probably went wrong too because we did not know how to do it correctly. Um, what's my favorite thought there? Google Maps, ZBrush, help me out people. <laughs> All right, back to portfolio. Um, so your portfolio is not the only thing that will get you a job. Connections. Knowing people will also get a job. So as I already told you, because I knew people from university six years before I wanted to find a job, those people actually helped me to get a job. And the person, the people I slept with in animation, uh, one of them uh, became a senior animator at um, senior animator at Ubisoft, and. One of the programs I knew from university is now one of the new programs of Triton. So, connections. So, if ever I would need to find a job, I could probably contact these people. Uh, some people at Larry Studios, there's one guy who's now working at uh, League of Legends, uh, for League of Legends, and one of them is working on, uh, on Heroes of the Storm. He's actually one uh, student that studied here. So, that was actually the thing I wanted to talk about, is the uh, personal work. Uh, Leslie Van Den Boek is the prime example of uh, a person who worked day and night, focused on his personal work, and that helped him to, um, that helped him to get, uh, get noticed. So the guy would work like eight hours to buy his studios, sometimes even 10, 11 hours. Then he would get home and he starts sculpting. Uh, some of you probably know the Disney sculpts, I guess. Um, well, that guy worked really hard and now he's working on uh, 24, I think. He's working on uh, one of the main characters in the Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, that's fantastic. But he couldn't have achieved that without his first work. 
So again, first of all, those are some really vital, and they're really vital to show that to, uh, to your uh, future, uh, to your future company that you are really passionate about what you want to do. Without personal work, you probably won't learn as much as you would. Now, you have to be careful with personal work too, because it might become too strange for you. Uh, one of the concept artists at my studio was asked for two weeks because he was basically working too much. Um, he put a lot of strain on his, on his arm, just by drawing day and night. So you really have to be careful for that. Be sure to dose your personal work and not work too much because it might become really unhealthy. Um, this concludes my talk on portfolios and views and books. I also wanted to show you some step by steps to conclude. And after that, I, well, if there are any questions on the book, I would like to be quite honest with I'm just going to show you some uh, personal work. This one is, uh, is, is second days. You can basically see my progress. So you have to, to imagine that um, I should put some context here actually. After the thing to do, we uh, started working on graphic matter and intelligent sense and intelligence. And uh, DNE just started um, started out, and the first batch of interns were coming. So really excited. Mm -hmm. First batch of interns was this going to be. And uh, Leslie was one of them. Then Tisho Arash, and uh, also Wallace uh, Wallace came in. And they could code, they could spray, they could do lots of art, they could do this ZBrush, they could paint, they could actually do everything. And every part was nice to be So we suddenly realized that we were completely behind. So we spent, yeah, almost six years in Cancun. And suddenly these guys came in with no. Uh, never worked on a game, but their art was actually a lot better than most of our artists that were for six years in five years, which was quite painful. So at that point I decided to cut my game and started to buy out to do slaves. So that's actually cool, I really want to do <coughs> I just took photographs, photographs I like, and I started doing studies now. There's there are different ways to, to, to do this, to approach this, and what I like to do is uh, basically block out my colors first. Now, I was already quite advanced with this, and it's, it's a thing that I can't show you earlier work, but I actually want to do that. So I'll show you guys how awful my first try to find this place. It's a little shame, but this stuff here yeah, was, was fun to do, really fun to do. But it was really hard to do because yeah, yeah, you spend so much time at work, and then you get home. Um, I have kids, three kids. And just trying to fit all of that in is really hard. So you have to decide what you want to focus on. And in this case, I want to focus on James Dalton, did some Zebrush sculpting. Uh, not that successful, but still don't have to do it enough to, um, to give feedback to, to support feedback. I don't know if you that 
Well, my main focus is in here. Color, uh, anatomy, study. That's what I like to do. And being art director at my studios also has the downside that you don't do as much of the reflection work as you actually want to do. So the concepts you saw before, they're basically almost all the concepts I did over a time period of eight, ten years. Not much. Like uh, we have right now a concept art, we've been doing like uh, three, four drawings a week. And if you do that, you get there. You just get there. It's like, in my case, I usually just jump in when it is necessary. So each time I have to jump in, I basically have to yeah, relearn the stuff I needed to know. So hence, again, that personal work really helped me to get back into the learning that I um, liked. Um, I tried out different stuff too. Sometimes I would just start out with a line drawing and then work my way up. Uh, sometimes I would work with um, block apps. And I could give you some tips on this to, if you want to try out this kind of stuff. Um, what you need to focus on when you're working out is uh, try to measure. Like, how big is the head? How big is the head compared to the leg? Stuff like that. Try to measure as much as possible and keep the strokes, strokes broad, broad in the beginning. Uh, measuring will help a lot. Also, try to find direction. So, a leg. Maybe I should go back. A leg might have a, or you might think that a leg has a certain direction, and then once you start measuring, you notice like, oh, it's more going up, I should go down. That kind of stuff is uh, helping, it could help you a lot. Um, sometimes if I need to do, um, I'm going back to my system, if I need to do a phase that needs to be recognizable, and I don't want to waste too much time, I just create by a bit for um, a thinner, this one, it took half an hour. I basically do it as I do it like that. So I took the photo, cut it the way I like it, and I start drawing lines. And I copy those lines to my canvas that I want to paste on. And then I have I already have my direction, I have my size, uh, compared and stuff like that. This might also be a really interesting way to, to approach it when you start out because it, well, if you would do long drawing, you would measure like this. But on the first thing, it's a bit more difficult to do, so just draw a line. I really have to walk. And it's a good way of, of learn, learning to, to, to look at stuff, to compare stuff, to get a feel. Um, another thing to, that really helps when doing these kind of things is to look for empty spaces. Like the, the space between the arm and the body. Stuff like that. How is that shaped? So it's a negative space. A negative space is really more important rather than doing it. So you might, when starting out, um, do some quickly walk, like um, the empty space might look like this. And then once you actually notice the, the fact that it's a, a small triangle, that basically fix it. And I think in most of the step by step, you basically see this that uh, I start up in my block app and stuff is shifted while I work. And this one probably can be a really good example. Try to focus on the space and see how you shape this to shift. So measuring is, is basically key. Uh, also using color. I um, use a lot of saturated. I use a lot of uh, saturated colors. Should not be a very even color. So 
But trying to treat your code is a such a great nasty uh, environment. I don't know if you, I think you guys know uh, Rob Zoss. He's a relation guy, he's a YouTube movie. I should really check him out. Um, he usually does these five to six minute uh, drawings, drawings on like five to six, uh, five to six minute YouTube movies. So he, he basically shows the steps he does by drawing. And uh, in his latest uh, videos, he shows you um, how he uses food as a base for his color. So he just takes a uh, black and white skin and then he throws on uh, a pizza. Like that, and then it's like taking color from the pizza. Because the pizza, the photograph of the pizza is already in harmony, so you don't have to think about the kind of color from the pizza. Uh, and we also use tacos at one point. Um, I can assure you, it's a pretty kind of way to start too, actually. So I really like that experience. Um, anyway, I think I can conclude my talk. So I talked about affiliates I had. And that those skills were not necessarily um, something that, that, that I should. That stopped me from, from, from getting where I wanted to, to, to get. And I also showed you some of my personal work and uh, step by step, and some of the thoughts that I had, and I really did step by step. So if there are any questions, since we got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned you uh, you kind of knew what was what uh, what not and what to do for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give, give like one or two examples to make some more? Um, you mean what you don't want to see in the portfolio, yeah. or yeah, or what you prefer to see in the portfolio? Yeah, because uh, when uh, when I ask for character artists, I want to see portfolio for the character artists. Uh, also, yeah, it just has to be a complete scenario. That's actually one of the more important things. And again, I just wanted to treat when I want to fit with the portfolio. And if you have to scroll through uh, every time to find the stuff you really want to, to, to see, then uh, it's not really uh, helping. It's complicated. Uh, I also have to admit, I would not be more to the resume. Um, because I think the portfolio is one of the most important things. It shows you uh, how good the memory is and how motivated the memory is. Um, I think I wrote some of the other stuff down. Yeah, make accessible. And don't mix. Just don't mix uh, different stuff. When I started out, I wanted to. When I first created my portfolio, I showed a lot. So the thing is that if you show a lot, you actually show that you're good at a lot of stuff, but you don't excel at things. And you really want to excel at these days. Um, it's debatable because sometimes it's actually good for an artist to be able to uh, do different things. To be able to, to do tracking, uh, or to be, uh, to be able to do environment, right? So, if somebody is specifically asking uh, for a scatter artist, then I would show, for example, culture files and scatter files. Lots of environment. And the thing with only showing the best work <coughs> is that if you show a lot of stuff and there's stuff in there from like three, four years ago, and it's not that good, it could downgrade your portfolio big time. So, uh, I've seen it happen so many times. Uh, people show off the work and then the last picture is just one there. What, what it tells me then is, is did he actually, does he have a good feel of what was good and what was bad? If you show a bit of your portfolio, yeah, it's not that, it's not that great actually. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, when you're drawing uh, in color system, mm -hmm. uh, what do you prefer? First drawing on line, uh, or like a sketch of the person or something you create, or would you just start bother with uh, the color? Yeah. It's a great question. Uh, I'd like to uh, start working on the shape. So usually, <coughs> 
this one by itself. So just go to these gates, line drive. So this is one because they're uh, facing the big field, and I don't think it's that. I could not do that with um, um, just looking at the thing. If I would have blocked it out, especially on the photograph, it was quite blurry, you can also see the drawing is kind of blurry. It was hard to see the anatomy, so I used line drawing to figure that out. But usually I like to start out with just flat colors, like, like this one. Just flat colors. And work my way from uh, dark up to bright. Um, much like uh, you would do in lower stages uh, or any stage, it's basically the same. So if you go up, you keep some of the, the dark. And sometimes you could actually also do what they call it. I mean, you give, uh, you know, give some fiber to the lower stage. So you need to experiment with that. But and also, yeah, brushes. Really important to get some good stuff out there. Um, just some random noise brushes. I tend to overwork my stuff. Usually, the step before the final thing is better than it. Apart from this one, I usually break my heart for some reason. But the thing is, you can't know, you can't know when you went, you went too far until you actually did it. And then probably, yeah, usually somebody else tells you, like, yeah, you went too far. I prefer the version before that. I probably won't. But I don't have space to do my hands. Yeah, this one is probably the best one I did. And that kind of sucks. Because this one's from two years ago. And I did not manage to get over it. So every time I start painting and uh, do something, I just bump into it. And yeah, failure again, but just keep on trying to get through that wall. And that's also something which you should take into account. Um, if you're um, happy with your work, then either your work is fantastic or you just don't like it. And that's bad. So usually when I paint something, I like it for like two, three weeks and then I start to hate it. And then I want to yeah, just try to get it there to 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 achieve something which is a lot better. And that's quite frustrating, but I think that's mainly the thing of being an artist. Uh, at one point, you get to a point where you start to see all the flaws in your work, and yeah, you just want to make it better. Like, uh, you start working, and it doesn't happen. At one point, you break through that wall, and suddenly all your work is fantastic. And after a few months, you start to flop again, and you're back where you are. That happens to me a lot. And um, yeah. It's quite frustrating, but it, it's actually the thing that, that, that keeps me going. Strangely enough. So, back to your question, actually. Uh, here I did the line drum again. Uh, because uh, if uh, one of the cards at work fine, he does not a line drum. He's really good at it. Um, he has this. Uh, Fully fired kind of fruit in front of mine. So I have to scribble. That guy can just do it straight away. Fully really tough. I tried it a couple of times, but it's just not my thing. I prefer blocking out. So I tried it a couple of times also for just a uh, simple poster time. I tried to um, yeah, do it with light. Make uh, line cleanup and take me so much time, it's so frustrating. Or also, of course, my hands really have to be forced to, to squeeze your pen, don't like it. I like to work raw, we really like to work with uh, a gesture. And uh, I'm training myself now on, on, on making concept art really quick by just um, yeah, walking out shapes. 
Yeah, I could show you some of the work on the road because that was how I, uh, I didn't have bread. Yeah. Before. So you can see where I erased uh, the white, um, where I erased the back of the dragon, and this basically broke out. So started to have like something that is here on the right, so really, um, yeah, messy. And I started to define uh, the shapes of some of the really sharp. So if I would do this with a white brush, it would be that uh, visceral. I can't show you stuff I, uh, I'm working on now, which is the case of the actual production. So um, it would be interesting to show you what I'm doing now. If this morning I did five uh, of these drawings. Uh, just in couple of hours, um, really simple, very fine details, everything in place. Um, it's just uh, yeah, a practice, a way to do it. If you like line drawing, go to line drawing, if you like small caps, go to it. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, when it comes to applying for a job, um, are you in charge of getting a portfolio or viewing a portfolio? Is it digital or actually a uh, digital portfolio? Is it digital? Yeah. Um, can be online, uh, can be PDF, yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, usually, you know, when you are invited, when you, uh, when you are invited for an interview, then uh, it's useful to bring more stuff to show, like, uh, this is my main thing, and this is the stuff I do on paper, or that's my interesting thing. Maybe you, you do some new sculpting, show that kind of stuff, show that you're passionate. It's actually one of the most important things, show that you're passionate. Okay, yeah. um, you talked about um, how it's for an artist, an artist who shows work in the portfolio. Do you also have experience with like, what was the problem and what you have to do to, to showcase this work? Or uh, how does he, uh, because there is a story. Okay. Yeah, I can't, can't really say. Um, I think the program is probably hard to show what he did. Um, yeah, well, I'm thinking. Um, I'm relating now to the uh, game, live video, which is this video. And we have some of the uh, XC stuff that's not very good. Yeah, it is serious that the same word on a tapping screen can be seen. And one of the effects you have on a tapping screen, so that's quite easy to get into that. Uh, but I do not see their portfolio, I'm sorry. Uh, this Friday, um, they will do interviews, uh, they will not for internships, and uh, they found a series series going. Might ask them before I go any further, but I feel like I'm serious. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. Actually, yeah, this Friday, if people are interested in internship, I have two years. Your first year, I think. Yeah, they're saying it's internship. Not yet. Not yet. In two years, then, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we have a favorite uh, video. It's cool in your for animation. So yeah, we also need animators, so people interested in animation could also apply to us. Um, and yeah, of course model textures and designers also. So it's quite well. Anybody else? Ah, yeah. Is there any company you'd rather be working at? <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that camera now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's difficult because I've worked for three companies now. So I like, did my first company. So I basically know the downsides and the Side of the company. So, at Imagination in Motion, uh, it went really sour there. 
I play logic. At one point, it was really great to work here. At one point, it was really power. And at my studio at the moment, it, it, it's still really fun to work there. It has its ups and downs, especially to, during a critical moment. When uh, we were working on original sin, uh, it was a thick last year, and we were going to release it. Um, my experience was almost out of money. Just imagine that, so to speak, suddenly hearing that my studio is almost bankrupt. And the only thing that could save us was uh, soon early access. And we were not ready for soon early access. Right now. And luckily, Sven managed to get some more money for three months to bridge that gap. And yeah, this allowed us to, to, to um, get the game ready for early access, to get again more income, and to make the game up to standard. Because that was actually one of the most important things, if we didn't release too soon. I could come back up with some Kickstarter game. You end up with releasing a broken game. <coughs> yes, you don't want to release a broken game. Because it will kill your game straight away. Even if you patch it one line, people will still know it. The fact that you can destroy the game is not for you. I still didn't answer your question, eh? <laughs> I would love to work at Blizzard. And perhaps we have the same kind of content that we have right on. Small team. Um, not sure if I would like to work in, in these large companies like Ubisoft or EA. Well, from what I hear, usually it's the small teams working on something, but uh, the downside is looking for uh, something like Ubisoft or that. Um, decisions about your game are being made. Um, not in your company, but outside of your company. So we might be looking at approaches for two years and somebody needs to come back and say, I can't be fine. And not with my students, which is independent. And we don't rely on a publisher, we don't have that problem. So it's something, yeah, which I think is really important. Um, the fact that we're independent and we can make the game we want to. I've seen a uh, production Divinity 2. Divinity 2 actually got released too soon. And uh, we were able to fix it with uh, the Dragon Eye Saga, which was good to be um, expanded by uh, expansion with some um, extra uh, stuff in there, but still, I think it could be a, a better game if we were allowed to. If you would have been allowed to finish the game like you wanted to do. Same with Grand Commander. I think Grand Commander needs to release this. Some of you play Grand Commander or see it? Okay. <laughs> um, there were some really great ideas in there, but I think we need to do some. I think one more year is going to be a fantastic game. Right now, this was more of a novelty, so really great ideas that we want to But luckily, pretty civilized, so we will send it to save science here. Uh, any more questions? Yeah? Yeah, uh, which software do you use to do you want to save? Uh, Photoshop. Oh. So, I think <laughs> I want to I want Frank Painter. And I should also try out some other stuff from Speechbook, but just can't get to it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> if I have to do personal work, I have to do it between 10 and 11 at night. So, it's kind of difficult for you. Um, so, learning new software, or just Taking software you know is this decision I need to make. Uh, I have software, for example, at uh, Line 3, so we're working on the PC and Mac. Uh, but the animation part is shifting to Maya. Now, there's talk. Just a second. Uh, there's talk. Um, 
Mount Kamala is really also shaped to my Yeah, it's going to be hard for us to we need to find a plan to do that. And for you guys to find a single vote, I think once you have a family and we need to run a family, it's going to be really hard for you to do that thing. But you have to choose. And in my case I prefer to uh, spend my time on, on colors, on sims. And maybe someday I will need to shift my attention to learning software, but at this point I am still really comfortable with uh, the basics. Yeah. Um, at this moment, you have a lot of big game development companies, but is there also a good survivability for smaller companies like for to teams like for to spend people or less maybe? Or, it's more difficult. Or is it a certain suicide? Um, it's more difficult now. Uh, Steam and the Axis really helped to, to, to launch smaller game companies, but it's, it's kind of the same as, as, as we've seen now with, with Silent games. Um, there are so many now, and it's really hard to make a decision. Even big names and have a hard time now to get exposure. Um, like, uh, when I was young, I, I played with bands. Old World War One simulator, and when I heard that um, the original creator was uh, starting was being kickstarted to create a new band, I was really excited. It was a big name. He was the same. It was for me. It was at the same level as Chris Cornell and his wing commander. Now Chris Cornell was quite successful. Then the guy. Only heard of it. I, mean, so that's just, yeah. I think most of the time it's just down to luck. And uh, one wrong decision can kill a small company, and it happened to, to Grin. It's a, it's a perfect example of how a small company can choose something really successful, but one stupid mistake and you're gone. And it's a real shame. It's tough things to do. <coughs> yep. uh, how do you decide the price of a game or I don't know what else? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, because all games are usually uh, a lot more expensive because uh, there's I think for every game you want to want to ship on a phone world, you have to pay a certain, uh, certain price. And that price is calculated in the game now. So, um, but I think for our games, we usually set the uh, price margin of 40 euros, I think. And I think for a triple A, that costs. One hundred million dollars to make they usually set the price down to sixty. So in a way, the pricing already tells you what kind of game it is. So uh, you just look at uh, the other people and you pull your fishing to what their prices are. Um, for the Kickstarter, I think we, we set the pricing to twenty-five euros. Something like that. Uh, same for uh, the reactor. I think the reactor is still to uh, the sugar actually. It should be some stuff to uh, something like that. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, if you just look for a different company to work for, um, are you thinking more important the art style of your team or the way the company works in small groups? I'm a big fan of uh, art stuff. I really love art stuff. And I try to push original sin in that kind of direction. Um, some other people in the company <coughs> can't really like art stuff. So it's kind of got counter to the sense. So it's kind of a pity. Um, and for original 
would think by deciding not to do the art fiction anymore and maybe focus on making co-op production, and somebody else is doing the art fiction now. And I'm really comfortable with that. Because it's spite of my disaster, the way it works in the and I think that actually uh, I think uh going to be right now and I'm going to be Anybody else? Yep. So, yeah, uh, what's the difference between technical art direction and regular art direction? Uh, art direction is uh, mostly focused on how things look, and technical art direction is um, we want this kind of stuff to look like that, how do we go and approach it? Um, and just the technical side. Okay. And there are a lot of uh, overlaps, but uh, mostly uh, your team is uh, with the art director now. He's deciding like I want the art to look like this or that. And um, I usually go over yeah, I need to uh, I usually go over the back steps and see if they were translated as well and if um, all the technicalities of creating the assets are okay. There are a lot of other questions. Any questions? If there are no more questions, we can thank him for his talk.